smaller size 10. Um, and while from a technique standpoint, it's, it's pretty much the same, uh, more or less techniques, um, you know, you just have to select your material a little differently. Um, the you know, smaller stuff and then you have to be a little more conscious about your thread wraps and things like that because you are working on a smaller space so the hook I'm using right now is a TMC 8089 nickel plated hook that's not stainless even though it's shiny it's nickel um, and these are a nice hook they add a little flash to uh, to the fly I could also tie them on this hook here this one is just a Tiemco 8089, standard 8089. It's the bronze hook. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do the nickel hook. Um, sometimes I kind of like it. You know, the nickel hook does add a little flash to the fly, which is kind of nice. Um, so let's go ahead and let's uh, get started with this fly. The hook is the Tiemco 8089. Let's look at the feathers. So I'm going to start with um, some whiting chickaboo in yellow because the belly of this fly is going to be yellow. Um, here is a whiting chickaboo um, saddle. It's the whole saddle. The, the cape, let's see if we can um, back this up a little bit. Um, the cape is the bottom part of this. Yeah, so here's the cape. Or the piece that would be across the bottom but you get all these short feathers up here these this so you can either go with a super boo the super boo which is the stuff that's probably the most useful or you can do do an entire cape for the chickaboo um, so this one uh, this is a really nice one it's got a lot of feathers on it for that that'll be that center feather the next thing I use is legs and one of the things about um, you see this cape is pretty picked apart well that's because all this stuff up in here is the stuff that I use for my bigger flies which is what I normally tie so what's nice about tying these smaller ones is I'm going to get to come down here and use some of these smaller feathers that are in this cape and same thing here now here's a complete this is the whiting black lace 10 uh, this is a complete cape um, but and I haven't used a lot of the feathers but even though still if you look there's a big empty spot right in here in the middle that's where most of the my, my tying takes place with most of my kind of normal standard size bass bucks but I'm going to get to come down and make use of these smaller feathers down here in this smaller fly and then um, for the hackle I'm just going to use an orange and yellow mix and again the same is true this is just American a whiting American uh, rooster. This is a whiting American rooster dyed orange. This one is a whiting American rooster dyed yellow. And same thing, you know, normally I'm picking feathers from here in the middle. In fact, I can even feel a little kind of an empty spot right in there, kind of up in the middle of this cape, where I'm going to come down in this part of the cape and select these feathers for this smaller um, fly. Is, is some type of flash. This one I'm using here is um, Cascade Crinkle Mirror Flash. It's in a root beer color, which kind of, if you can look at it, kind of picks up those orange gold colors, which I thought was a kind of a nice match to this particular pattern. So let's go ahead and let's tie the tail. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, as with all my bass bugs, I'm going to start and I'm just going to rough up that area right there. Take a little zap a gap and brush that area with a little bit of zap a gap. Just a little brush, just not very much. A little tiny bit. That'll just help kind of lock in, uh, lock that tail into right into this place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie in a little thread base. Okay, let me unwrap one, one more, there we are. So, um, the thread base is about the, let me get the thread here. The thread base is going to be about the distance 
of the tip of the tip of the hook to the, the, the barb, even though the barb, I guess I haven't crushed the barb down on this yet. Let me do that right now. Normally I crush the barbs first. There we go. Didn't take very much. It's small barb. Um, so this tie-in area up here is the same distance as the tip of the of the point of the hook to the bar. That's about your distance. Also, the back of the tie-down area, if you drop your thread, you'll notice that my thread is right here at the point of my hook. Okay, that's the back of the area that you want to tie down. That's where the, the bend starts, and so you don't want to tie down into the bend. So we're going to keep, we're, our goal is to keep all of our tailing materials right where that thread is at. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my yellow chickaboo. And I pulled a few feathers here. And I'm going to marry them up into a nice little clump here. And I try to get them evened up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to measure this out to be about the from the eye of the hook to the bend of the hook. Then I'm going to want to cut it. Okay. I'm going to put the, the butt cut, cut ends right here at the front of the thread and then wrap behind it. A couple loose wraps, tighten up, and then just once again kind of redefine that tie down area. Okay. Now one of the really small little things about this, but one of the important things is this little tuft of feather right there. You want to leave that there. You don't want to wrap over that and create this slope because then all your tailing materials will want to slide down into where you want your leg. So now I'm going to take some of my flash here. I fish clear water lakes primarily so I don't over flash my flies. But a little flash is good. And I do like to embed it inside my feathers rather than just put it on the bottom. Um, I just think that if it if it's sparkling from inside the feathers, it's just a little bit more subtle look. So let's lay that in there, and then I'm just gonna come back here and cut it. Oops, missed that one. Cut it about the length of my about the length of my feathers. Now I'm going to take some of that orange. And I'm going to put this orange chickaboo, super boo, up on top. And I'm just going to get a little bigger bundle than I had for the yellow. Because orange is kind of my predominant color here. So again, I'm going to kind of measure it out. Come in, cut it. And then lay it in here. Come in behind. Remember, don't get too close to the front of that. And bind that down just like that. Okay. So now this is going to act as kind of the centering, a centering feather, and then my legs will splay out around it. Okay, so my belly's going to be yellow and my back is orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, let me get my feathers here. So... I'm going to take these two feathers, I'm going to kind of marry them together here, match the tips up. Then I'm going to put the yellow on top of the curve, like this. Match up all three, kind of marry them together. And what's nice about this black lace hen is it's webby enough that they marry together pretty nicely. You can see when I put it on edge there that they're pretty nicely together. And I'm going to want this curve, I want the curve to go out away from the fly. And so I, the, I want the inside feather, I always match, and there's no magic to this, but I always match the inside feather to my belly color, the outside feather to my back color. Okay, so now I want my tail to be no more than about two, maybe two and a quarter at most times the length of my body. So you can see there's one, two, maybe just a little bit. So that's about the right length right there. I'm gonna get these feathers, get all these st stems stacked real good. Lay it in there. Now here's something real important. What you want to do is you're gonna come in, you're gonna grab three loose wraps. Those are just loose. Now I tighten down. And what that does is it draws the stems together. Um, 
if you go tight from the beginning, you're gonna, the feathers are going to want to move around on you, and they're not going to stack in there nice and neat. You can see these feathers, I guess they're a little separated, but they're not too badly separated. The curve has kind of stayed in there. Let me get them up on the side a little more. You can kind of move them around a little bit. Now let me get a couple more wraps in there. Whoops, you know what? They've slid down. Let's try that one more time. So I've got them married together. So let's come in here, lay them in. Now make sure you're wrapping your thread on that tie down area thread. Let me shorten this up a little bit. So I'm controlling it a little better. Okay, there we go. So you can see they stayed nice and married together and they're right there on the side. Get a couple more good tight wraps on it. And I just come in with my scissors, come right up to the back of that and cut them off. Okay, I'm still maintaining that front edge there. Let me get these cleaned up a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Got a couple of feathers here. feather in there get the tips I'm just matching the tips up I'm kind of sliding them around to get the tips matched up one of the things you can do I've done in the past since they curve you can lay them on your leg and match them up but I was able to get these matched up pretty well so now I flip them over all I'm going to do is match tip to tip so they get the same length oops that one slid a little bit on me match them tip to tip I'm going to come in here, grab a hold of them there, and just grab them tight. Come in, about three loose wraps, and now draw it down in. That way, they're not going to move around too much on you. And then I'll pull these back, come in, and there you go. Okay, so you can see I got a nice splay with my feathers. You can see those feathers that I put on the inside in there. So I've got a, a nice look to my tail. Now the last thing I'm going to do is going to take some of that American whiting and I'm going to do, oh I'm doing four feathers here. I got two orange and two yellow. I just kind of blend together whatever colors I'm doing for the particular fly I'm doing. So now I'm going to trim them and then what I do is I come in here I come in here and I stroke the feathers forward like that and then I come in and I trim each side. So now you can see I create this little brush and I'm going to tie these dry fly style meaning the curve is going to be towards me that way the, the half will angle forward. Okay so I'm going to come in here get a couple wraps right here remember to stay right in that tie down area and now I'm going to bring this back just to the forward part of that okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little thinned this is just goop it's just an old bottle it actually says thinner on it but it's actually Dave's Fleximat which is thin goop it's um, just the kind of stuff you buy you know in the hardware store goop cement and it's thin with tallowy and I've got it thinned out so it's just maybe a little bit higher viscosity than water. I want it nice and thin because I want it to just soak into those thread wraps like that. I just put one little thing in there. That's going to help soak that through the thread wraps. Then as I wrap these feathers through the glue, um, that'll help to bind that whole thing down. Then I'll set this tail aside, let that glue harden up before I go tie the deer hair portion of the fly. So just one wrap there. You want to be careful of your thread wrap. This is the part of the fly where you want to be careful with your thread. Because it's real easy to get it to want to slip off the front of this. Um, so I just do one wrap to hold the feather in place. I don't do multiple wraps. 
Now let's get some orange in here. The length of the barbules can be anywhere, as you can see, this is a little, this is probably three quarters of the hook gape, anywhere from three quarters of the hook gape up to maybe one and a quarter of the hook gape. You know, you're not tying a Catskill dry fly, so it's not like you gotta be absolutely accurate on your thread. You're just creating uh, something in there that's gonna be a little transition between your deer hair body and your tail and um, and give the fly some texture and movement. That's all you're trying to do. So, okay, come here. Let me get a wrap through there. Okay, let's take my apple pliers off. I'm going to come in here and trim the, the tips of those feathers out. Now I'm going to pull the hackle back, come here in the front, and I'm just going to wrap back on that. And then I'll just do a whip finish. And let's see, there's my tails. So you can see I have a nice V to my tails. I've got a nice texture in there. I've built a lot of nice texture into the into the center of this tail with those chickaboo and uh, superboo feathers that I put in there. It's got a little bit of sparkle buried in there that'll show up. Um, if I were going to tie for a, a, a lake that was uh, very tannic or was, you know, just muddy, colored up, whatever, I would make the fly flashier. So there's the tail. So we'll stop there. And then we'll move on and do the deer hair work. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's spin the deer hair on this fly. So just like my bigger flies, I'm going to start by getting the hackle and the tailing materials out of the way by putting a little thread band around them. Um, this is a temporary thread band. Um, it's not going to stay there. Or once I trim the fly out, I'll cut it out and then you know, get all the legging materials to come back out. Let's go ahead and let's just whip finish that. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of Zappa Gap to start my thread. Okay, and I'm, what I'm using is a gel spun thread. Um, and Gel spuns are real slippery. I think I've demonstrated before, you know, how you wrap it and see it just slides off. So you have a little glue to kind of hold it in place. So let's go ahead and wrap that up there. Cut my tag. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap forward on this. I'm going to put down a thread base. You can build thread bases as you go, or you can just build one at the beginning doesn't really matter which way you do it. All right, so now the belly on this. So one of the things about this fly I'm going to be do using is I'm going to be using um, um, spinning hair rather than belly hair, rather than deer belly. Deer belly, white-tailed deer belly, of course, is white. And so <clears throat> when, you, uh, when you dye it, the colors are really bright. But the flank hair has an underlying tone of gray, so the colors are a little more muted. Um, and so the colors, you can see, they're not quite as bright as belly hair is. But I, that's kind of what I'm after on this. I don't want quite this really jump at you bright colors. So it's going to be a yellow belly, orange back, with a, a, a sort of a gray bar, a little black ring and a gray bar. That's what I'm working on. So let's start here. Now here's the trick with doing these small flies. And that is don't cut too much hair. Small amounts of hair, small amounts of hair. You can see, you know, that's that's not a lot of hair. In fact, that's almost too much. Okay, so now let me come in and trim it top and bottom. I don't need the tips for what I'm doing. Lay it in here. So we're going to go three wraps. The third wrap is going to bring the bundle around to the bottom. Put your thumb on there and flare it in place right on the bottom. Then it should all be right on the bottom of the fly or of the hook shank. Now I'm taking a little bit of orange, not a lot. 
because remember I'm going to be adding the black and the gray up here on top. Um, so just lay that on top, two wraps, kind of right through the middle there, and then just kind of hold it in place and flare it so it stays right on top. Then just a little tiny bit of black. I'm not using much black at all on this. And really, again, the trick to these smaller flies is don't grab too big of bundles of hair when you clip your hair to, um, to spin it. There's a little bit of black. Here's the gray piece I have. This is a really nice piece of gray. It is flank hair. You can see it's a nice light, uh, dun, light dun or light gray color. Um, and I really like these patterns that have these these kind of gray accent colors on them. You can use gray for a lot of different color combinations and it looks nice. So I'm gonna clear that in place. Then I'm just gonna kind of compress that back with my fingers to start with. And I'm gonna work my thread forward. Now this first bunch, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a half hitch in front of it. A couple half hitches. And I am going to use my packing tool, but I'm not, it's not going to move very much. You know, it moved a little tiny bit, but it's up against the tail, so there's not a lot of room for it to move. So now I'm going to come forward, and I'm just going to repeat that process. And the reason, one of the reasons I come forward is get the, get the, the, get the next working, get the thread forward out of the way of the hair behind it. Um, you know, you're going to compress this back into where you need it to be. And what I've found is um, if I, uh, if I um, get the thread forward and put the bunch a little bit forward of the last bunch, I don't tend to catch hair and fold it, fold it over. And if you've done much deer hair tying, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Roll that bunch to the bottom. Flare it in place. Then let's come get my orange.
secure mod when I get done. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of comb through this. I look at the top to see that my my stacks, so this one, I think this is the back one. Let's see. Yeah, this back one has moved over just a little bit. I'll just move that back towards me. Um, yeah, I think they're all pretty well lined up. Come down here on the side. Now the side's gonna, the side's gonna have uh, a little orange bleed back and forth with the yellow, and that's fine. Actually, it looks kind of good. I like that look. Um, but I just kind of comb through, make sure I didn't catch any hair that might fold over, and I don't see any. So there you go. There's the spinning phase of this. Kind of see the amount of hair on it. So we'll set this one aside, and um, then we'll do the trimming part. Okay, so now we're <clears throat> we're going to trim this bug out. So I want to show you what I've done here. I put this little template. You'll notice it's not a circle. You can do circles. This is a little more of an ellipse. I'm going to use that as a guide for my kind of first uh, rough trim of this. Um, and you've seen me make these before. That's just sort of a student grade watercolor paper. You can use any kind of card stock you want to use that with. So and then I'm going to come in here with my little blade holder and I'm just going to follow that guide and just trim back on this fly just to start to get my rough trim going. What these guides do is it just makes getting that body, the initial body shape so much faster and so much more consistent. That's the thing I love about this idea. Um, is you just very quickly get to a body shape that you want and you don't have to spend too much time doing it. Starting to see those bands of color coming out in there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my scissors. This is why I put that band of thread. You can see that band of thread there. That's why I put it there because now all my tailing materials are out of my way. So I can just come in here and I'm just gonna clip the back of this body square to the tail. Just kind of come around and do a, or I guess perpendicular to the hook shank would be a better way of describing it. Come in here and taper my bottom a little bit more. And I am going to taper this in on the sides. Okay, so now I'm going to pop off my little guide. Set that aside for another fly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fly and I've got my steamer over here on the side and I'm going to steam the fly um, and then trim it. Well, steaming will do is it'll help push out the, it'll, it'll, the, all the hair will kind of re-expand. Um, and it just makes trimming it a little easier. It gives it a little nicer look. You don't have to do this step uh, to make a fishing fly. Absolutely not. Well, you'll kind of hear my steamer off to the side here.
I want my body, if I look here, let's kind of do some measuring on this. There's, I got the gape of the hook there. Okay, so if I bring that measurement out to here, you'll notice, I don't know if you can see, it's, uh, it's yeah, there we go. That's probably a little better looking. See, it's a little, the body's a little big yet. Okay, it's not too big, it's close. But um, I want, I want my body from the bottom, from the bottom to the top to be about one and a quarter or one and a third of the hook gape. And I'm not quite there yet, so I'm going to come back here. I'm going to start on the belly of the fly. I'm just going to take a little bit off. And then, I, again, I make those corners. I made, because I flattened it, I made those corners. So I'll come in now and I'll round those corners out. Those little edges. And then the other thing, too, yeah, I want to do is from side to side, I want it to be about the same. So right now, my side to side is just a touch big. So I'm going to come in here and do kind of the same thing. I'm just doing a, a cut that is perpendicular to the belly cut I did. And then I kind of look at it until I get, okay, there's my... There's a, that's about it. There's where I want it to be for from side to side dimension. So now I'll come and I'll just hit these edges a little bit. And truth be told, you could sit and work on these for a long time. Just try to perfect them. Um, okay, and then I think, yeah, I can see I've got a little high spot right here. Let's come and round this one out a little bit. There we go. Now I think I'm starting to get there. Maybe I want to take a little, a little bit more off my belly. And then taper it into the half collar there that'll be pop up here in a minute. There we go. Take any little edges I can see, just kind of smooth it out. Yep, there we are. Now I think I'll come back here. Now I can kind of look at my face a little bit and maybe flatten my face just a little bit on here. And now I think what I'll do is I'll steam it one more time. Yeah, I got a couple of eye spots yet. What I do is I'm just looking at it face on here. There we go. Now I'm starting to get pretty symmetrical. Got a little high spot there. Um, come in here with my scissors and maybe just do a little, a little bit of a face trim just to get that face nice and flat. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good, I think. Let me look at the front of it there. As I said, you could sit and fuss with these for a long time if, you, if you're a bit OCD about it. Which maybe I am. I got one little high spot right over here. Then I think I'm done. Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and cut that thread band. And one more time, I'll throw it in front of the steam just so you can see.
Okay, so there, there it is, kind of the finished trim on it. So now let's go ahead and let's finish the fly out. Okay, <clears throat> so now um, I'm gonna finish out the head. I'm gonna put a thread head on it, put some eyes and put some legs on it. So I'm gonna start by using my hot point tool here and burning a little socket here for my eye. And then I'll come here and try to balance it, get it on the other side. Okay, so you can kind of see the two sockets there. So let's go ahead and put this away. And just take my scissors here and just kind of brush out the ash that is left behind. Okay, I'm just going to use a couple of real small kind of orange yellow eyes. I would say they're maybe about two millimeters, maybe two and a half millimeters in size. Um, so I'm going to start, well actually I'm going to put my legs in first. So let's do my legs first. So I'm just doing some, some centipede speckled orange legs, mediums. The speckled, even though they're mediums, they're still pretty small. They're small enough for this fly. So let me pull out three of these. And I'll just group them together here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread them through my body. Um, if you look at my book, my, the deer hair, tying deer hair flies book, uh, you'll see that I, in that book, I tied an overhand knot and tied them in. And that's definitely a way to really do a good job of securing them. But um, it makes trimming them a lot hard. It makes trimming the hair. You got to always trim around them. So in recent years, I have gone to just uh, threading the, the legs in and then gluing them. And I haven't had too many issues with them coming loose. Now, when I put this through, okay, so I've got this, you know, when I put it through my body, I want to come above the hook shank. So I'm going to come and I'm going to place it between the first stack and the second stack. Kind of find that space right down in there. And just kind of pull them through. And I keep pushing a little downward pressure on them until all the ends come out. There we go. Now, I take these legs and I just put downward pressure on them and work them back and forth a little bit. And then I bring them out towards me just a little bit. Then I'm going to take go back to my Dave's Fleximent which will, uh, which when I put it on the legs and then I put, pull the legs into the body, uh, the actually the glue acts like a little bit of a lubricant. It'll actually make them slide a little easier and I can bury them a little deeper. So I'm just adding it right to the leg material itself right here. Now I'm gonna pull it in and when that glue gets in there, see how it, all of a sudden it popped? And now I'm going to really just kind of work those glued legs in there and let them fall. And there they are. And once that glue um, cures, those legs will be pretty tough. I mean, they don't they don't come out too easily. I'll come back in here with my razor blade. I disturbed a little bit of the hair. Now what I'm going to do is I like my legs to come back at least back probably about as long as my tail. I want to get good movement out of them. So I'll just come down here and trim them. And yeah, that's that's about the right length right there. As you can see there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little two glue step. I'm going to take the, the Dave's Flex cement. Remember, I thinned this out. This is goop cement right here. Okay, and all this is right here is just the goop 
says Dave Flex went thinner. It's just an old bottle that had some thinner, thinner. The thinner, by the way, was Halloween. Um, but I just, you know, this bottle's been, I've used it for years. I just keep throwing a little bit of goop in it and then thinning with Halloween. So it's basically the same glue. It's just, this is a thinner version of it. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit thinner version in here in my eye socket. Put a few drops in there. And then I'm going to take my goop. I'm going to use this my little paddle that I made out of a bamboo chopstick, and I'm going to put a little dollop of glue down into that eye socket. I'll lay one of my eyes down in here. Just gently sort of set it in the glue, and then I'll. Just kind of work it in. So there's the eye. And I'll come over here and I'll just repeat the process. Good, drop it down into my eye socket there. Okay, so that's got a little eye in it. I can maybe be a little bigger, you know, whatever you'd like. Um, and then uh, last step is I'm going to come with a, just kind of a burnt orange UTC 140 thread, and I'm going to do a colored thread head on it. Here I will use my whip finish tool, come in, and then the very last thing I'm going to do is Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. You can get it at grocery stores or, you know, any store that a lot of stores has something this something similar to this. I'm just going to paint those thread wraps really good with this stuff. Really let it soak in. And this this way between having glued the gel, gel spun thread underneath and then this glue this thread wrap on top with this glue, um, I've definitely. Uh, then I'm just going to take a little scrap of a feather and push it through the eye just to pull out any glue that might be in the eye. Okay, so there you have it. Really a nice little bass bug. You're downsizing from the ones that you normally use, uh, which will often trigger bass to eat it. And a bonus, you can sometimes pick up bigger panfish, uh, even crappie now and then will take top water, or rock bass. So there you have it.